Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you because it is a beautiful name. It's a name that we can call on in the good times and bad times, Father. But it's a name that's brought redemption, mercy, grace, and love, Father. And I pray that tonight's message can help us take steps, not just receive mercy, grace, hope, and love from you, but to give it to those around us because of who you are. In your beautiful name we pray. Amen. All right, squad, you may have a seat. Uh, can we give a big praise uh, to Jesus real quick? Put your hands together for Jesus. And the second noise I'd love for you to make is, can we celebrate our worship team real quick? Yeah. Bring in the vibe. So a uh, quick intro, and then I want to give a shout out to James real quick. So James, stay tuned. Um, but this team is comprised of middle school, high school, and college students. I don't know if you knew that or not. Um, um, Levi does have some facial hair coming through, so you may be thrown off by that. Uh, but we have a seventh grader knocking out the drums from a new century. Do you want to make yourself known, Levi, real quick? <clears throat> do, it, do it for your fans. Uh, but he's in seventh grade. Uh, we got some college students. So in that spectrum of age and grade level, if you have a talent, if you can sing, if you can play an instrument, and not just your parents think that you're good, and not just the friend who's too afraid to tell you truth, but other people think that you do that well, holler at us, okay? And by us, I mean James, right here in the back, right there. Could you give us a little wave, James? Boom, right there. See him before you leave um, so that he can tell you the next steps and how to um, do your audition and send that in. Um, but cool, appreciate you guys for that. Now, turning uh, turn uh, back to our message. So uh, we are in a series called Now You See Me. Uh, we're talking about self-image, self-value, and we're kind of playing with this whole term. Uh, I'm hoping that you enjoy this series, that you're sharing with some people, that it's helping you. Uh, last week, we saw some breakthrough happen for uh, many of you, so that's awesome. You decided, hey, I want Jesus to take over my life, so that is phenomenal, and we're excited for you. Uh, but we're going to pick back up in this topic, and um, tonight's question that we're going to answer and the title for tonight's message is this, who are you representing? Who are you representing? Uh, so uh, turn to the person beside you and say, who you repping? Now turn to the person that you ignored for the first time. And I, and I, don't, know, I don't know why, but ask them, who you repping? Now look to the person behind you and say, I put on for my city. Okay, so yeah, okay. It's, all right, too much right there, my fault. You had, had to, had to, had to. So, uh, so here's what I, wanna, I want to start off our conversation with is this right here. Um, how many of you, just raise your hand, you don't have to say anything, but how many of you like imitations of like celebrities? You like people who can imitate celebrities really well, like that's funny to you? Yeah, 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 that's pretty cool. All right, all right, now you put your hand down. Now everyone else, uh, here's, your, here's your, another question. How many of you are good at imitating other people? All right, so we have a few. We might have to put y'all on stage at some point. Now let me, let me try to lock in these memories real quick, Okay. So me, I am not good at imitating people. My mom can imitate people in our family very well. Like just mid-conversation, she'll have a dialogue with herself to show us what was said during another conversation. And she just changes characters. I'm like, you need a TV show, All right? Me, I'm not good. I mean, me and Lennox have some one-liners that we share from Disney movies that you guys probably enjoyed when you were little, and now you're just like, that's played out. Josh, grow up some, right? But I'm, I'm, I'm in two-year-old mode. But that's all I know. But there are some people who are really good at imitating other people. And it's because they'll pick up on characteristics and things that they do or how they say it. So instead of me trying to imitate someone, I want to introduce to you here in a second a guy that became famous because of how he imitated NBA players. He would look at what they do on the court, and then he would mimic it. And he became so famous that this one particular former NBA player, Dwayne Wade, said, hey, I want you to come out here, and I want you to show me me. Okay, so check out this, uh, this clip of this imitator real quick. So, but so this guy became famous because he would act like someone else. So essentially, Dwayne Wade invited this guy to his gym and said, hey, I want you to show me me, because I want to see how you represent me, and he showed Dwayne Wade some things that Dwayne didn't even realize he did, 
So he said, all oh, that's that that turnaround that you do, yeah, you always bring it right here. And he, as he did, he's like, Dang, I, I do I do that. But then there was something else the guy picked up on. That pass where it was a no look to LeBron and then he just had his arms out. So you know this was a couple years ago because LeBron plays for a different team now, but just in case you're not an NBA fan and the Wayne's retired. But anyway, so he did that no look and then looked at the crowd with his arms out one time, and that was a pass that really stuck with this guy to imitate him and say, you may have done it one time, but it really stuck with me. So with both of those concepts in your mind right now, the how you could do something one time that sticks with someone and how you represent someone, I wanted to tell you tonight that I think there's someone you forgot that you represent. And I want to remind you. Okay, so if you brought a Bible, you can turn to Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. It's just one verse, and I'm going to tell you a story, and then we're going to be done, okay? But check this out in verse, it'll be on the screen for you if you don't have a Bible, it's cool. Uh, But Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, this is when God's creating everything. He's made the, the planet, he's made the environment, he's made everything but us. And then in verse 27, he gets to us. Here's what it says on the screen for you. It says, so God created mankind in his own, say that word, image, right? Thank you for that, though. I appreciate that. So his own image, and he goes on, in the image of who? God, G-O-D, the one and only. He created them, male and female, he created them. So that lets me know who created me and how he created me. God had a model for how he created you and me. The model was him. So when you're walking around and you're having conversations and you're, you're Taking some stuff. How many people, real quick, have taken a selfie ever in your life? Absolutely. Yep, selfies have changed the market on a lot of things. But how you use that selfie, how you comment on someone else's selfie, when you get your phone out and you're with your friends, right, girls, and you say, I do not know why she posts stuff like this. This is, if there was a dislike, if there was, if there was a dislike, I, I would light it up, right? You know how you, know how you talk about them and they that, that, that kind of conversation you have because it's your circle versus their circle. I don't know why, but here's what you need to remember, that you were made in the image of God. And the person that you are talking about on Insta and thinking about on Insta, they are made in the image of God. So when you're in your private conversations, when you're in your private thoughts, when you're just sharing your feelings and you're maybe being too honest and maybe too critical of someone, I want to just ask this question. Who are you representing? Because based off of that verse, it's not G-O-D. You're not representing God because God made that person that you criticize. God made you when you're trying to believe the negatives and the lies from the enemy of your soul and this world, right, that's what you're taking in, and God's saying, that's not how I made you. That's not why I made you. So you were made in the image of God. So with that verse, like, I need you to hang on to that, that, that idea that you're made in the image of God real quick, because you may have wondered, and we had this question a few weeks ago, like, hey, Josh, if the Bible was written so long ago, how can it apply to my life today? I want to tell you a quick story that actually brings this verse into not just Jesus' day, but our day as well. So I'll set this up real quick, and then we'll look at this story on the screen. Uh, But here's what happened. Jesus is getting tested by this group of people who were trying to trap him. They were trying to trap him because they wanted to arrest him, and they really wanted to kill him because of what he was teaching. The problem with what he was teaching is it went against what some of what they were teaching and believing. But the other problem was that it was true. So they were upset with Jesus because he was telling the truth and he was doing it in a way that they were like, hey, we just, I I don't know, it's something about you. We can't disagree, but we don't want to agree, right? And so they bring this special question to Jesus. And essentially, it's in Mark 12, uh, and it'll be on the screen for you as well. Uh, Mark 12, um, and it's popping up, I think, verse 15. But essentially, they were asking this. They said, hey, Jesus, um, there's this tax that some citizens don't have to pay because they're citizens here but we have to pay who we are. Do you think that we should pay it or not? And they were trying to trap him in hopes that he would say, no, you shouldn't pay that because you, it's not fair. And if he answered that way, then he could be arrested and then executed probably, but they could get him out of the way. So they were trying to trap him. But here's how Jesus answered 
their question. So on uh, verse 15, uh, they said, uh, Jesus, should we pay or shouldn't we? But Jesus knew their hypocrisy. Why are you trying to trap me? Right? So, so fellas, any time a girl asks you a question, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Just, your answer should be, why are you trying to trap me? Okay, right. If her friend comes over to you and says, why are you trying to trap me? Right? But that's not our lesson for tonight. Maybe in February when we talk about relationships, but not tonight. Uh, so moving on, why are you trying to trap me, he said. Um, bring me a denarius and let me look at it. Now, denarius is not a name. Now, you may know a denarius, okay? Invite him to squad, okay? Um, but a denarius back then, it's, it's money. So if you have any money in your pocket, bring it to me. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Um, but if you have any money in your pocket, I, I'd like to, you can take it out. Don't give it to anyone. Don't share it because you, some people in here aren't saved totally, okay? Uh, so make sure you have your money at the end of the night as well. But I have a quarter in my pocket, and it's the same kind of situation that in Jesus' time, they had coins, and like we do, our, our leader or past leaders are on the coin. So Jesus said, bring me a coin. And so they, they reached in their pockets and, and pulled out a coin. So okay, all right, we got one. And so verse 16, here it is. They brought the coin, and he asked them, whose image is this? A great lesson Jesus is teaching. So if you look at the coin that you just pulled out of your pocket, I don't know what it was, but my coin has George Washington, G-Dove, right there, right there. That's whose image is on this coin. So Jesus said, whose image is this? And whose inscription? Whose name? Right? Who does this coin essentially belong to? Kind of is what he's saying. And they responded, Caesar's. Our government leader, I mean, he's kind of far away, but he rules over this area, so it, it's Caesar. So for us, it's, it's a president, right? His image is on this coin. Listen to what Jesus, now y'all thought Jesus was nice, right? And you, you read what, he's, um, what he says, like real nice with a good tone. Jesus was a savage sometimes, y'all. He turned up in a way that would just make you question life, right? And it's real awesome. But check this out, verse 17. Then Jesus said to them, based off of what's on that coin, here's what he said, give back to Caesar what is Caesar's. So Caesar's, yeah, not little Caesar's pizza, but, you know, give that back to, but this, he's saying this coin has Caesar's face on it, so give him what belongs to him. So if he's asking for a tax, it's his inscription, it's his image on this coin, so give it to him. Pay your taxes. Which you're like, well, we can't trap him with that. The problem with this teaching that I want to highlight for you, is that Jesus didn't stop there. Check out what he kept saying. So he said, give to Caesar what is Caesar's. And then he said right after that, give to, oh, sorry, not right there. I'm sorry, Ms. Brandy. You can go back a verse. Uh, but give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. Then they were amazed at what he, what he taught. Josh, what does this mean for tonight? All right, let's go back over the, the illustration one more time. Give to Caesar... What is Caesar's? Give to God what is God's. All right, well, what's Caesar's? It's the coin that has his image on it. All right, Josh, what's God's? Well, what has his image on it? Genesis 1 says you. So who are you representing? So we, we pay our taxes. We pay, well, I hope your parents pay your taxes, you know, that kind of thing, but that's not true right here. Yeah, you, you don't have to let us know that, right? But pay to Caesar what's his because his image is on the coin, so give it to him. But here's what you also need to know, that God's image is on you. So you have to pay to God what is God's. So the follow-up question should be, Josh, how do I pay God, me, if I'm in his image? So how do I pay to God? Live your life in a way that honors God. Be a, maybe you've heard this in church, be a living sacrifice, meaning that there are some things that you'll want to do, you'll have desires to do, but you have to say, who am I representing if I do that? I need to turn another way. I, I, I need to, like, say that song, like we say, like, never have I ever, right? I've never had a love like this, so I'm going to deny what I want to do. I'm going to deny these feelings, these emotions, these desires, because I know that doesn't honor God, and I'm going to go this way. Why? Because God's image is on my life. So I'm going to pay to Caesar what is Caesar's, and I'm going to pay to God what is God. That's the teaching that Jesus wanted to give them. 
but I'm having a feeling that so many of you in this room didn't realize the importance of your image. Because right now, in, in, in your age, you think your image is just, how does my hair look? What celebrity does my hair mimic? Because here's what we want to do. We want to imitate. We want to imitate a celebrity, or we want to imitate someone else that we know, and we like their style, and we like some of the things they do. And there's nothing wrong with that as long as you don't forget whose image is on you instead of whose image you're trying to imitate. So with that in mind, I'm going to add one more practical step. Because when it comes to making the decision to say, hey, who am I going to represent? How, how do I pay and live my life to God since my life belongs to God? How do I do that job? And it's, uh, it's a very easy answer. And it's on my shirt. Serve. Very easy. Now, here's what you need to know. Um, maybe you've heard this. Um, a lot of people like, uh, we did a series way back. Damien, you remember. I don't know if anyone else, but you remember. There's a series we did a while back called Influencer. We talked about how you gain influence, uh, how you um, gain this clout, because we all want, we, we, there's some clout chasers. I don't know if y'all know that or not. There's some, there's some people trying to chase the clout. They, they buy their followers on Instagram. You know, you know, you know. <laughs> too, we're too real for them tonight, Damon. Right. You, you know, um, they, they measure their comments and their likes, all that, that, that kind of thing. They, they chase the clout. But here's what you need to know about influence. Influence, like we said in that series, is all the people you interact with, which is everyone you interact with. Here's the other thing you need to know about influence. Influence, true influence, will be inconvenient. It's not inconvenient to post something about you. It is inconvenient to serve your time for someone else. But that's true influence. And when you're trying to represent the image that's on you, it can be very inconvenient. So I want to tell one more story, and this is in Mark 10, but check this out. Jesus is at a dinner, and they start arguing about who's going to have more clout, who's going to be more popular, uh, who's going to be in charge when Jesus is done, that kind of thing. Like, who, who's next up? We want the popularity. That, they were having that discussion, and Jesus steps up and says, y'all have it wrong. Here's what you need to know. Verse, um, see, Mark 10, verse 44 into 45. Uh, it says, and Jesus saying this, instead, whoever wants to become great, raise your hand real quick if you want to be great, right? Yep, absolutely. Some people are like, I just want to get by, right? This math class is just a struggle. I'm just trying to make it, Josh. I understand that. But you want to be great, right? You want to. So he said, whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant. So if you want to be great, you have to serve. Verse 44 and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. You want to be the first person. You want to be in charge. You want to be the, the top one. You've got to be the one serving everyone else. Y'all, y'all thought that it's all about, hey, I'm going to be on top and y'all just serve me. But no, that's not how it works. Verse 45, and that's actually on this shirt, the bottom corner, it has this verse on there. So if you're asking where can I get this shirt, we do not sell them here, all right? You have to go to froningfarms.com and buy you one, Okay. Shout out to them if they're watching. But the last verse, here's what Jesus said. For even the Son of Man, talking about himself, even I did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So here's my question to close this thing out. If I'm sitting at the table and I hear this, I may want to raise my hand and say, Jesus, why did you come to serve and to give your life for other people? And Jesus would probably look at me and go back to Genesis 1 and say, because God's image is on me. So I'm going to pay back to him that image. And you do that, serve other people. And when you give your life, live your life as a living sacrifice, many. In a very practical way, if you happen to look around this room, you see some uh, people who are much older than you. They're our volunteers. That's our squad team. They pay their Wednesday nights as a living sacrifice so that you can have a safe, healthy environment to have a safe, healthy conversation. So real quick, can you applaud our volunteer team for making this happen? Absolutely.
What you don't know is that on Mondays and Tuesdays, they get these verses before you hear it on Wednesday, and they're reading through them. Uh, what you probably don't know is that they get the questions that you're about to discuss in a few minutes before Wednesday, and they peruse through them to see, okay, in my small group, what's the best way to ask this question so that they can understand it? Or how can I begin conversation in my small group so we're not just sitting there staring at each other and we leave there unchanged or unaffected by this message? How can we make Wednesday night the best night of the week? And it's their service and their living sacrifice. So for you, you're thinking, well, Josh, when I'm older, I'll do that. <laughs> and if I'm, to be honest, when I was your age, I thought when I'm older, I'll do that. But here's the thing you need to realize, guys, and here's what we love about youth, is that you're not the church of the future. Okay, that, that's, I know it sounds weird. You're not the future church. You're the current church. It's right now. It's not when you're older. It's not after you get married. It's not, well, Josh, let me get a job first. Let me get through college. Let me get through high school. Let me get through second period tomorrow. I mean, that's my math class, and I'm scraping. The, like, let me just wait. No, no, no. God's image is on you to serve, to be a living sacrifice that honors him, that obeys him, that shares him. That's who that is. So tonight we're going to give you two options, two options to serve want to on Wednesday nights, and I'm hoping that from Wednesday nights, it goes into Sunday morning. So here's what you can do. I'm going to have, we have sign-up sheets right up here at the end of the night after the message. Uh, you can come up here and sign it. On this side, we have, if you want to help run a camera, then come up here. You, you can point and film and record. Boom, this, this is you right here, and there's hand sanitizer up here. So you can, you know, before and after use, however you feel comfortable, but there's sanitizer so that you can be clean in the name of Jesus, right, as you sign up to volunteer. Uh, and so this is camera, to run a camera on Wednesday night. Uh, Josh, why do we need a camera? Because some of your friends aren't here. But something may be said from this stage and from this pulpit, from this microphone, that you're like, man, I wish they were here. I wish they could hear this. I didn't take notes that well. But, man, they're going through this at a later date. Well, on Thursdays at 7, it's going to re-air. And you can copy the link and send it to them and say, hey, watch this. At any time, it will be on there as long as there is a YouTube. And it looks like financially they're doing okay for themselves. So it's going to be a while. So just send that link to them. But that's only going to happen if we have people running a camera and hitting a record button, serving, being a living and sacrifice. And on the other side, right here, VIP and welcome team. If you're saying, hey, I don't mind introducing myself to new people. I don't mind making other people who are new feel comfortable. Right here is where you want to be. And the leader of that team is Miss Janelle. So, Janelle, could you do some jumping jacks for us or something right there? Right there, boom. So when you sign up here tonight, I'm going to ask you the next squad, which is next week, to find Miss Janelle and say, hey, can you tell me more about this? And, Josh, why is it so important? Why do we need to, like, have a VIP welcome team? I want to take you back to your first squad. Your first night that you came here and you saw different people. Now, some of you, when you came, there were 30 of you, Okay. We've grown a little bit. So at some point, we have a room of people that it's been their first time as we've grown, and it can be overwhelming. New people, who it is? Uh, I, I don't want to you know, venture outside my comfort zone kind of thing. So we want a familiar face that's their age, looks like them, talks like them, same TikTok moves and everything, can do the whole thing, and y'all just sit up in the new VIP room for students and just make TikTok videos, take some pictures, put them around the property, help them feel comfortable, so that when they get here, the wall that they have up, they can kind of let down and say, you know what, it's not that bad. Because some of you, here's my favorite part of squad, one of my favorite parts, salvation's obviously at the top. One of my other favorites is when I know a parent says, yeah, they're nervous about coming, they don't want to come. I have to pull them to come. Y'all know who you are, right? I, I got to make them come. Right? You don't get your allowance unless you go to the church. Right? That's cool. But after about three to five weeks, a shift happens. And all of a sudden, they're saying, hey, are we going to squad tonight, Mom? Dad, you, you, you drop me off? Pick me up? And all of a sudden, they feel comfortable. So we want to help them with that process, and we need a team to do that. And if I do it or our adults do it, it's not the same. When a familiar face approaches them and says, hey, welcome to squad. We're glad you're here. That's, that's your job description. Right there, I just did it. You can do a world of difference in their life. So if that's you, I'm going to ask you to sign this sheet of paper after we pray tonight. And the last of it all is even if you don't sign either of these sheets of paper, 
or even if you do. Another question you need to ask yourself at the end of the night, every night, before you do something, ask, who am I representing? I don't just want to imitate someone else. I don't want to imitate a celebrity. I need to imitate my creator. What did he do? Love people. Love the world. He gave his son for you and for me. And real quick, I want you to imagine what would your world, what would your house, what would your environment look like, sound like, feel like? We acted, represented God the way we're supposed to. Might be a little bit. That being said, bow your head and close your eyes.